Initially released in July of 2016 as direct competition to AMD's RX 480, the GTX 1060 was around £275 at launch for the 6GB variant, around £25 extra than the aforementioned RX 480 8GB. Both cards performed well at this price point, often trading blows depending on the game. However, the GTX 1060 is still one of the most popular GPUs according to Steam's hardware survey. And with so many of you guys still using this card, and with an affordable use price of around £150, I thought it'd be interesting to see just how it performs in 2020. The card I have here is the Asus Dual GTX 1060 6GB, with 1280 CUDA cores, a base GPU clock of 1594MHz, and a boost clock of 1809MHz. It has 6GB of GDDR5 memory at a 8000MHz effective speed. Display options include two HDMI 2.0, two DisplayPoint 1.4 and a single DVI port. And finally, it requires a single 6-pin PCI power connector with a recommended PSU wattage of around 400 watts. Benchmarks will run at 1080p and 1440p, paired with my i7-4790K and 16GB of DDR3. So do bear in mind that performance may differ depending on your CPU and memory combination. Right, onto the games. First up is Red Dead Redemption 2. Running at the lowest preset but with ultra textures. At 1080p, we achieve 62 FPS on average with a reasonable 1% low of 44 frames per second. Using the same settings at 1440p, our average dropped to 46 frames per second with a 1% low of 36. Performance at 1080p was smooth for the most part with some occasional dips into the 40s when in areas such as Saint Denis, but this is expected. At 1440p, we we're still able to sit comfortably above 30 FPS at all times, given a better than console experience. Overall, a good start. Next, we tried the Resident Evil demo at its recommended settings. I know the full game has now been released, but unfortunately, I can't afford any more games at this time. Which is a shame, as I wouldn't mind spending more time with Jill Valentine, if you know what I mean. Performance was excellent at both tested resolutions. At 1080p, you can expect 96 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 62. Gameplay feels buttery smooth with no noticeable performance dips. It's a similar story at 1440p, with an average of 59 frames per second. RE3 is more than playable at this resolution. 1% lows aren't too bad either with 43 frames per second, a very nice result for the GTX 1060. A game that I found myself playing a lot recently is Mad Max. It looks great, plays well and runs smoothly on a variety of hardware, and the 1060 is no exception. With all settings set to max, 1080p is perfect for those of you using 144Hz monitors, with an average frame rate of 145 frames per second. And a 1% low of 79, performance sits comfortably within the range of most FreeSync and G-Sync compatible monitors, making for a smooth, tear-free gaming experience. 1440p fared well too, with an average of 76 frames per second and a 1% low of 60, so you can expect to achieve that 60fps sweet spot throughout. As someone who recently dove into the world of 1440p high refresh rate gaming, I was not disappointed in the 1060's performance in this game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is up next, and I've been somewhat obsessed with the new Tomb Raider games recently, and I can think of two huge reasons why. Of course I'm talking about the excellent gameplay and breathtaking visuals. <clears throat> Running on normal settings with TAA, pure hair on low and tessellation disabled, at 1080p we achieved an average of 71 frames per second with a respectable 1% low of 55. Gameplay was smooth at these settings with no noticeable dips in performance. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said for the 1440p results. The average frame rate was acceptable at 40fps and 1% lows seemed fine too. However, I did notice some occasional stutters and FPS dips. Although noticeable, it wasn't the worst I've ever seen and they were so infrequent, I'm sure most would be happy to play at these settings. Turning a few settings down to low should help alleviate any performance issues you may run into. Taking a quick stroll through the streets of Novigrad at the high preset, the 1060s seem to handle The Witcher 3 very well. I did notice some stutters for about a minute after loading in my saved game, but these quickly went away and never returned. It was kind of weird. At 1080p, average frame rates are excellent with 85 frames per second, and a 1% low of 60fps keeps the game running smooth throughout. 1440p results are great too, with an average of 58fps and a 1% low of 51, more than playable for this type of game. Bear in mind these numbers are a worst case scenario, with no grab being a notoriously taxing area of the game, so you can expect performance to increase depending on where you are. Overall, I could happily play my favourite game of all time at these settings. 
And finally, a brand new game from Lord Gaben himself, we have Chicken Slayer Globally Offended. Designed to run on a bread bin, performance is excellent on the 1060 at max settings. At 1080p, you can expect almost 200 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 133 frames per second. But I've been up the resolution to 1440p, you barely see a dip in performance with an average of 181 and a 1% low of 108. This makes the slaughter of poultry exceptionally smooth, especially on high refresh rate monitors. However, do bear in mind CSGO will differ in performance depending on your CPU. So with all the benchmarks out of the way, I can safely say the GTX 1060 is still an excellent choice in 2020. Performance at 1080p is more than enough for most modern titles at decent settings, and 1440p performance is pretty good too, more so than I expected. If you still own a 1060 in game at 1080p, you should be good for a few more years yet. But for those of you looking to buy used today, there are a few other options to consider. One GPU I picked up recently is the RX 570 4GB. It cost me just £70 and from my testing so far it beats the 1060 in half the games I benchmarked. This is really impressive considering it's less than half the price. And for around the same price or just a little extra you can buy a new RX 580 8GB which outperforms the 1060 in most games. But if you absolutely have to go with Team Green the 1060 is still a great option. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. I will be uploading a video on the aforementioned RX 570 soon with some closer comparisons to the 1060 if you guys want to see that. A £250 console killer build is on its way too, so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if that's something that interests you. Anyway, thanks again for watching and hopefully I will see you all in the next video.